All oh, right. Says hello. The Mables, I says. Wait, what? Oh, oh, Lord, oh sorry. They're doing it again. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to some episode of Star Trek Euthenia, an actual play of Star Trek Adventures as written by Modifius Entertainment. I'm ELH the Game Master, and uh, my announcement was going to be that I had an April Fool's joke, but apparently that April Fool's joke I'm going to actually have to run. So long story short, if you want to play kind of a Twitch chat plays Star Trek Adventures, um, well, watch my Twitter, because we're apparently going to be running my April Fool's joke. Uh, other big announcement is that it is uh, Aaron's birthday, so everybody say happy birthday to Aaron while we're here. Oh, happy thanks, guys. Happy birthday, Aaron. Happy and birthday. then uh, other big news, it is First Contact Day, so we're going to have a little bit of fun with that as well. I think that's it for the announcements, so let's just have everyone uh, introduce themselves, and then uh, we'll do the intro and get started. So, Aaron, birthday boy, what you got? Um, yeah, hey guys, I'm Aaron. I am thrilled uh, to be here. I'm thrilled to have Wolf back uh in his in his rightful place as our science officer uh tonight since it's tuesdays in star trek i'll be playing captain williams uh the human commanding officer of the euthania monday nights you can come and watch me be a giant stick in the mud as lu song she the earthbender uh and resident uh wet blanket on rise of the dark avatar wow what a <laughs> intro <laughs> mm. um i'm just wadney and I'm here to play Commander Setko, the first officer. And you're it's just fantastic. Happy birthday, Aaron, and welcome uh, back, Wolf. Thanks, friend. <laughs> A commander of few words. <clears throat> I'm Dag. I play uh, Euthenia's resident Edosian, three legs, three arms, one brain. I don't know what any of that means. I'm CMO, and uh, I want to welcome Wolf back. I want to give a big... Uh, birthday shout out to Aaron uh, in the audience. If you see Converse for acting, it's also their birthday. So give them a free shout out too. Uh, first contact day birthdays for the win. And if you want to talk about it, hit me up at Trek Nexus. Nexus. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were. Ah, oh, damn. Ba -ba -ba Bingo. <laughs> Uh, hey everybody, uh, my name is Darewolf, Darewolf Gaming 88 on Twitter and Twitch. I'm playing Commander Sergeant Nicholas T. No, just kidding. I play Commander Saros Ras, the resident science officer for the Euthenia. On Monday nights, I also play Shazo, who is their firebender and agent of chaos. And I'm pleased as punch to be here. Last but certainly not least, uh, Aaron Get Bent. There it is. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. Love you too. Is that an airbender joke? Y yeah, sure. We're going to go with that. <laughs> Uh, also, pleased to have you here, Wolf. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Matthew. I play um, Crewman Bezeth, a Vergeron and a member of a species native to the Delta Quadrant, who is the Euthania's intelligence officer. And on Tuesday evenings, I play the waterbender Amaruk in the Avatar game. All right. Well, with that, let's do the fancy intro video that uh, TechnoNerd made for us. So, TechnoNerd, take it away. And welcome back. So, something we usually do is have an opening log from the players, and I believe the captain of all people has it today. So, Mr. Yeah, Aaron, if you'd be so kind. Gladly. Captain's log, stardate 98002.4. Dorothy has been restored to full functionality thanks to Commander Rash and her archived auxiliary mnemonics. 
She seems to be back to her old self, apart from missing a week of experiences, but our logs and sensor data should help her put the pieces together. Thanks to Dorothy, we finally decisively bridged the communication gap between ourselves and Avalis. Her signs can now be interpreted and given voice by a modified comm badge. The last lingering hurdle of convincing her that we aren't gods can now be braved. Though I suspect that will be a long campaign of education and patience. The Euthenia is currently approaching a star system our sensors picked up as a potential source of Benamite crystals, crucial to our capacity to achieve quantum slipstream, and Dentarium, a versatile material crucial to structural maintenance. We intend to begin surveying the deposits as soon as possible. An additional report by Commander Sir Russ shows that sapient life exists on the fourth planet of the system as well. A nomadic pre-warp culture similar in body to the centaurs of Terran mythology, uh, akin as well to the Terran Mongols of old. But my reading shows them to be far more similar to the Axonarian culture of the pre-22nd century. Regardless, I'm thrilled at the prospect of a cultural survey, though strict protocols will have to be observed to maintain the integrity of the prime directive End log you may have one momentum as that lovely opening log so we are going to actually go to the euthenia's main conference room where you all are in the middle of basically doing your daily stand-up reporting in all your departments and for sake of argument, I think Rash is going to take the floor here for a little bit. But uh, she kind of yawns in the Rash way and goes, All right, so I've kind of gotten Dorothy back up running, and she's still figuring out the whole week thing, but uh, she'll be fine. Um, Sarus and, uh, and, and uh, Razib, though, um, do you think you could help me with the construction of her new body, though? Because while I can make a kind of an android, I, I, I can't really do the whole, like, science -y and medical stuff involved. Can, can, can... I don't know, you think we could do it together as, like, a project kind of thing? Yes. So Russ's tail flips back and forth very excitedly. Uh, Commander, there is actually something I wish to speak with you, uh, Resh. Um, I've been working on a bit of a side project ever since Dorothy had her accident, and, well, I've already built one. Uh, it... Well done. Uh, well, of course, well. I'll need your, uh, obviously, your sign-off on the more mechanical aspects of this uh, new body, but it's pretty cool. As you say that, a coffee cup materializes on the table in front of everybody, like smack dab in the middle, and it's a Starbucks-style coffee cup with a green logo on it, and it just sits there. And Rash looks at the coffee cup and points at it and says, that, that, that one wasn't me. Did, did somebody replicate coffee? No, I'm pretty sure it's for you, and you resisting it is suspicious. I, I, I believe this is a test you of your loyalty. Aisle, All right, and, and Rash kind of clambers up on the table a little bit because, you know, she's a short bean, but she takes the coffee cup and swirls a little bit, and there's a rattling sound inside, and she says, I, there's something in here. It's not liquid, and she pops the top. Uh, there's, there's a nice linear chip in here. And hold on, this logo, it's like a Salat mixed with like a Jaguar. I, the hell is this logo? Dorothy? And Dorothy's avatar appears. Uh, you want me to play what's on that uh, isolinear chip? I want <clears throat> you to scan it to make sure it's not anything infectious. Um, well, I can tell you that it's got some chroniton particles coming off of it. Uh, same with the coffee cup, but... Captain. I mean, Chronopons. Good. I was hoping that a full quadrant's worth of distance would put half a galaxy between me and any more chroniton particles. Please, Captain, Dorothy. If I may, as a matter of security, should we not isolate it from the main computer and play it on a pad? Very wise. Seth, please. By all means. Hmm. So Ross offers the Seth one of his many data pads that he carries on him at all times. I 
did not mean you to imply that I was volunteering, but very well. Mm -hmm. He'll just reach out and take the pad and essentially play the isolation ship on it. All right. And here's what you're going to get before I explain a little bit further. Hello, Euthania crew. We, the engineers of Phoenix, hope this missive finds you well. Solaris. Here is the data on the micro wormhole test with the parameters expanded to show the issues you faced and how to fix it. Don't screw up this time. Shraz. Hope you're still alive out there. Kila. And then Rash kind of looks at the pad over Vizeth's shoulder. Uh, okay, there's a lot of data here about the micro wormhole jump that got us stranded out here to begin with. But um, if I read the time code on this correctly, this is about a year out of date, uh, meaning that they sent it about a year ago. So does that break the temporal prime directive? I, I Okay, I'm not gonna report it if nobody else does. Like, I, I can't deal with the... Uh, so Russ's tail moves up and grabs the coffee cup and slowly moves it under the table. I didn't even see any coffee cup at all. What are you talking about? I was right there. You're holding it in your tail right now. You hear a clank clank and his tail comes back up. No, I am not. There is nothing in my tail. Captain, your prerogative. I'll note it in my log. If they want to reprimand me when I get back, it'll be like a vacation. From what I've studied of your temporal prime directive, however, this is not in violation of the regulation. You are receiving a message from the past, not the future. Well, the, the DTA are squeamish about everything. I imagine any way we slice this, somebody will have some questions to answer it may as well be me so perhaps we Dorothy... should run a full analysis on the device to make sure its authenticity is correct we wouldn't want to be tricked into some other kind of ploy exactly with your permission i would be happy to run the full diagnostics uh, on this chip to ensure authenticity of course russ i'd like to work with viseth on that viseth i want you to make sure that the most stringent security protocols are followed of course, Captain. And Dorothy, please note in the ship's log that if this data pans out, I'm authorizing its use. Sorry, there was a pause there as I was just processing the fact that you lamented how much you missed me, and now you're just like, Dorothy, I only want you to do little things. I'm not pouting, I swear. And Rash looks up at the ceiling and goes, all right, I did definitely not raise you to be sassy, lady. Hold on. No, uh, uh, no, no, I need coffee. Dorothy, hit me. And an actual coffee cup full of Rash's preferred liquid appears I in her head. All right, thank just, you. That, when that's in an open-topped cup, it actually makes my eyes water. Well, that's part of the experience. As you say. Well... Does anybody have anything else? I wanted to ask Commander Saras what kind of neural network he implemented in the shell body that is conveniently already built. So Russ will swipe his data pad and click a couple buttons, spins it around, slides it across the table. It lands perfectly in front of the good doctor and has a full list of everything that he's done. Mm you mind if I look over this list? Mind, Doctor? I would uh, prefer that you did. I think that we all would. Hmm. Indeed. And if you see any room for improvements, I am completely open to it. We are, after all, a crew, and we need to work together. Okay, I'm... Captain? Couldn't have said it better myself. Captain, it strikes me as somewhat odd that the commander has been able to appropriate ship resources for a project that he embarked upon on his own initiative without clearing it with you and he is not being reprimanded oh. yeah they do they do have a point russ I, they do have a point captain but you've also encouraged us to find opportunities to improve ship life. And I figured 
This was one that was a drastic improvement for one of our most important crew members. Someone like improving the energy stores of the ship by 15%. But, but what are exactly. you talking about? I thought, I thought we weren't going to talk about that anymore. And he just sort of scratches at the uh, linkage between the bone spurs on his forehead and then sits back in his chair. Now that's all I have. I'm due back in the med lab, my shift on the fungus. Yeah, speaking of, how is that going? We are having significantly good breakthroughs compared to where we were two weeks ago. Excellent. Are your power allocations sufficient? So far. Um, just make sure that you loop in Rash uh, for any additional power that you may need. Understood, Rash has fallen asleep in her chair. Just whenever she wakes up. So Russ takes another data pad with information on the new Dorothy, like robot and slides it gently in between her arms, just like trying to be careful with it. Mm. Gives her a little pat. Stetko, you're feeling a feeling you would associate with Avalis. It's not quite fear, it's not quite reverence, but something in between. And you can tell that she is wandering the corridors outside. Unless anyone has anything further, I think Avalis might need some attention. Must we coddle her? Like we coddled you when you first came aboard? I made myself a valuable member of this crew from the very first moment I set aboard ship. If you'll recall, Doctor, has right. Avalis... Well, Avalis hasn't tried to blow herself up yet, either. Avalis is also from a different she's, dimension. She's a refugee. You have vast knowledge of this area of space. In fact, you're more equipped than we are out here. I simply don't understand why she is permitted to remain on board the vessel without making any meaningful contributions. Might that not actually exacerbate her anxiety, a feeling of purposelessness? Razi will lean in and go, this is what the humans call the long play. We wait to see if helpful uh, talents uh, manifest themselves over time once the individual has become acclimated to their new environment. Every species is very different. You're quite quick. I would say, Doctor, that we evolve based on the environmental factors that surround us. Pressure forces change and adaptation. I, I'm sure they would say the same thing about us. Were we in their realm? Oh. The mention yes. of of this new member of our crew, so Russ looks very nervous and his ears go back and his tail twitches uncomfortably. You Something right, on Russ? your mind? Oh no, nothing. I am fine. Um, where did you say she was? She's wandering the corridors near the bridge. Oh, uh, well, let's see. Uh, Commander, do you, uh, Captain, do you need me for anything else? Not at the moment. So Russ drops almost all fours and bounds out the door opposite the direction of the bridge. And if, maybe you ought to go with him. What? <sighs> Fine. Is there an empty box outside I don't know about? <laughs> Stecco will Perhaps. like swiftly get up and kind of go. Um, in the meantime, him. Doctor, you're Needed in sick bay, I believe. And Hi. Viseth, I'd like a word with you. Of course, Captain. So, everybody filters out. out, and Rash is still asleep, but you can still talk if you so wish. <clears throat> I mean, you brought up some interesting points about change and 
evolution. Bumps in the road aside, I've been very impressed with your ability to work within the constraints that I've set for you. And I know from your perspective, they are limiting. Mm -hmm. But let me just say you show a remarkable aptitude for adaptation and you excel mm -hmm. in your duties. I know currently that you're functioning as my intelligence officer. I want you to continue in that role. But I think it's time for you to do more. Uh, I would be pleased to offer my services in another arena, Captain. As you know, I don't appreciate downtime or that thing they discuss in the lower decks. What is it? Buffer time? I find it offensive. I understand. <clears throat> I'd like to offer you a posting as the head of ship security. Is this in response to the recent infiltration of the vessel? I suppose in part, it's, it's in my nature to expect the best of people, but that shouldn't come at the cost of preparedness crisis and ability to respond. I'd like you to fill that gap. I would be more than willing to assume the additional responsibilities of security chief, although you do recognize that my somewhat inflexible standards and approaches might rankle some of the crew who are used to a lighter hand. I've found in my career that sometimes it's beneficial to shake up the status quo. Is there anything else, Captain, about the responsibilities that you wish me to assume? Yes. The position has to be held by an officer. So if you're willing to take it, then I'm going to issue you a field promotion to Ensign. I am disinclined to further embrace your hierarchical command structure, but I understand that it is necessary for all of the members of this crew to operate within it. So I will accede to your wishes in this regard, Captain. Good. Then, Captain, as your intelligence officer and chief of security, might I reiterate my concerns about Avalis? Go ahead. It is a difficult thing to not have purpose in life, Captain. In fact, some might say that it is unendurable. At the moment, she has lost everything that she knows, everything that she was familiar with. I believe that she thinks of us as gods because that is a comfort to her. It gives her stability, grounding, a sense that she is part of something larger than herself. Well, I am loath to encourage this kind of aberrant perspective on the universe. Give her structure. Otherwise, she's an unstable element that we can't control. I'll work with Commander Stetko to begin aptitude testing. We'll see if she has a natural aptitude for any particular discipline, and we'll begin her education. Very good, Captain. Excellent suggestion. Anything, anything else? I doubt you would take as kindly to the suggestion that we lock down all quarters and prevent any officers from departing them, save for their duty shifts. So no. 
Very good, Ensign. Uh, you're dismissed. Captain? Leaving the captain in the room with Commander Rash for a moment, and Rash is uh, snoring. She's cutting some logs. Yep. Uh, the captain's just going to get up and move to leave the room and just sort of, like, nudge her. Uh, 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 we can reroute the uh, oh everybody's gone already okay yeah sorry about that you're right. no you're fine just um turn off the lights on your way out okay we, we, we do we are we Dorothy are we doing that uh yes commander while you were not you we've implemented okay I don't care Dorothy they just just make it happen and yeah we're going to do a scene transition, and I have to ask Sir Russ a question. Sir Russ, are you actively avoiding, because I got the sense you're actively avoiding Avalis, yes. but do you want to be encountered by her is the question. That's your call, Game Master. I will adapt to your scenes you present to me. I'm going to have you be present. All right, so what's going to happen is, Sir Russ, you're going to run in to the officer lounge on deck one. And right when you think, oh, everything's uh, just hunky-dory, that's when Avalis kind of wanders in behind you. And behind her is Commander Stetko. I adjusted for the stream. And I don't think we've actually been in the Officer's Lounge proper since it's gotten its retrofit. But there is a large aquarium towards the back where the couches are situated. There's a big MSD slash painting of the Euthenia above a 3D chess table. Uh, the bar is curved and has a variety of esoteric and exotic drinks behind it. And there are actually a series of seats on the opposite wall that are also following the curve of the wall. But uh, Saras, where do you hide is the question. Saras is hiding behind the bar. Okay. And as she enters in, and then Stetko enters in as well, you can just barely make out the top of like his eyes and his ears are back. You can see his tail is floofed up. Okay. So Stetko, you can tell Saras is there, but Avalis kind of walks over to the tank, kind of stands before it, and then she starts signing something, and her comm badge chirps in a mostly robotic voice, which you're going to have to probably work at, but it says, I do not know what these creatures are called. Truly, they are a wondrous creation of the gods. Uh, those are fish. She kind of cocks her head to the side. Fish, an excellent name for a species created by one so heavenly. We didn't create the fish. We're just caring for them. It is still a noble endeavor, and I feel as if I am just as much like fish to you. Well, you are a sapient life form, so you're different than fish to us. There is a that thumping sound you hear when a cat's flicking its tail very aggressively and it's like hitting the floor. It's like thump, thump, thump. Uh, uh, give me just one second. And Stecco's gonna like go over to the bar, probably around the end here and peek around it. Be like, what are you doing, Commander? You see Sir Russ's claws are out and they're like slightly dug into the the like wood top of the bar top and his tail is flicking back and forth aggressively and his ears are down he's making himself himself look kind of small and he doesn't acknowledge that tone first uh so she's gonna be like commander uh, oh uh, stands up straight fixes himself hello commander i um uh yes what can i do. What? And his eyes keep darting from the commander over to the bird lady, and then back to the commander, and then over to the bird lady, and then he slowly starts to crouch back down again. Uh, so Stetka's gonna go over, like, next to him mm -hmm. and put a hand on his shoulder. Oh, yes. Hello. Um, commander. I, um, yes. Uh, what can I do for you? Why are you looking at Avalis like that, commander? Uh, like what? like behind the bar like you're gonna pounce on her i would never commander that would be 
completely in, inappropriate. I am, uh, uh, and he leans in. Commander, I am having urges and I am uh, unable to describe, um, I, I'm having trouble with them. Perhaps I should go see the doctor. It is, is not, uh, this normal for? No. You're, okay. And as he says no, he's slowly crouching back down. You see his like hind legs are like getting in that pounce position like he's ready to dive. Yes. And that tail starts to flick back and so forth. So at this point she's grabbing his uniform <laughs> by the back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like the scruff <laughs> area. <laughs> and kind of like holding his shoulder too and his arm. Yeah. Like no, no, no. Yes, no. But, but, yes. We're going to go to sick bay. That would be best. Avalis, would you mind uh, seeing the captain in his ready room? Please. It's Russ's now, nose. I assume. Yes. With she haste. walks by. You can see his little nose just like, just like smelling like in her direction. You see it the claws. Like like the cat claws go in and out, in and out. I don't think Stecco's ever seen his claws like out like that. So she's like wide eyeing them. <laughs> and she's like maybe struggling to like keep him like in, in, in this spot. And and she'll just like try and like hold him steady until Avalis is like safely left. Yeah, at this point Avalis kind of says at your command, oh heavenly one and steps out of the room. And uh, as soon as she's gone and the door slides shut, Sir Russ readies back up, shakes his head. Uh, Commander, you'll have to forgive me. It, this is a sensation I am, what I've never experienced before, but I, I do believe seeing the doctor would be a good idea. Pats him on the back, sternly, smooths, smooths his uniform down a little. We need to talk to Razib about this. This, this is. Oof. Would you mind accompanying me to the uh, med bay, Commander? Yes. Thank you. And she'll take a route, definitely away from like kind of anywhere. Of all all says, yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have a couple scenes lined up here, but we have to figure out the order of operations. Um, if I'm remembering five minutes ago correctly, Vizeth, you were going to work with Rash to check out that pad, if that's correct, that isolinear chip. Yep. Okay. Where would you like that to happen? Uh, probably main engineering would be the most reasonable place. Main engineering, it shall be. All right. So it's been a while since we've been in main engineering, but uh, to set the scene again, there's kind of that wide open space in the middle with the two warp cores thumbing horizontally uh, to either side of main engineering. And Vizeth and Commander... Rash are currently situated at the main table and looking over the isolinear chip in terms of authenticity. And I would make you roll for it, but you already got two momentum, so I think that's already a good amount to have. But uh, yeah, Rash just kind of looks up and yawns and goes, I'm going to be honest with you, Ensign. Oh, and congrats by that, by the way. Um, I think it's legit. Like we've we've checked this thing like six different ways, and it, it's legit. I mean, it's out of time, but it's legit. It does appear to be a genuine message from the Federation. I am somewhat curious as to how it was temporally displaced. Well, I I can maybe maybe explain that. So they figured out why the Euthenia got displaced as much as it did in the micro wormhole test. But uh, when they quote-unquote fixed it, they didn't, they didn't account for the temporal quantum nature of uh, everything. So they fixed the problem, but they essentially shunted their message through time. And as she's been delivering that explanation, uh, Vizeth, every time she pauses to yawn, almost like inflates slightly, as if he's almost trying to breathe for her and catch enough oxygen for her and then deflates again almost consciously. Looks down at the, the pad, registers what she said, and then almost cocks a brow in a vague approximation of a human gesture that's been picked up from his time amongst them. May I ask you a personal question, Commander? Yes, I'm single. No, I'm not gonna date you. 
I believe that our species are actually incompatible. That was a oh. joke, Ensign. If you're an officer, I gotta be able to make jokes with you. You can make them. They may not be effective. But I don't know if that's my fault or yours. More to the point, Ensign. What's on your mind? Have you ever considered any kind of genotronic replicator therapy for the neural damage that I believe is responsible for your narcolepsy? And she actually kind of looks at you with a little bit more interest and says, well, would you believe, uh, uh, well, long story short, every doctor I go to tells me that uh, this isn't something that we can wave a probe or wave a device over and fix. No, this is just the way I am. I don't think there's any good way to fix this. Then I suppose that we are both just consequences of our own genetic coding, our own the idiosyncrasies of our physical makeup. Whatever you want to call it, but um, and her eyes kind of widen as she looks at the pad again. Hold on. We may not be able to use the micro wormhole problem that they fixed, but hold on, hold on. And she starts rummaging through pads. Uh, Ensign, uh, I need you to take this pad to the captain. And she hands you a pad and you see that it is captain's eyes only waiting for an access code. I see. I presume that this is sensitive information that cannot be simply transmitted to the captain digitally? Let's, uh, let's just say that the captain has a very big decision in front of him. And um, I don't want to blindside him. Hmm. Is there anything else about the data itself and the way in which we might at least use the micro wormhole generator to send a message back to Starfleet? That's, uh, that's actually on the pad. I see. Then perhaps it's best for me to take this to the captain immediately and cease wasting your time. Well, Edson, you don't waste it. Uh, it's always fun chatting with you. <laughs> and she falls asleep. And then Zeth just shakes his head and walks off, grumbling. That was be me being polite and offering you the chance to take a nap, but it apparently... My politeness works just as well as her humor. With that, we're going to transition down to sick bay before we do the captain scene in the ready room. So, Sir Russ and Stetko, you walk in, and Razib is doing something with a hyperspanner. Uh, Major, am I interrupting something? Ow. I'm just trying to get this hyperspanner calibrated appropriately to be able to hold the next test without um, losing another sample. Oh, well, um, hopefully this will be quick. So Russ, would you like to explain to- It's a mm -hmm. I don't know how to say this, so I'm going to say it plainly. I rather do Evian uh, crew member, I am having certain looks around, leans in, urges. Predatorial or sexual? Predatorial. Oh, whew. that's easy. Uh, we should be able to mitigate that with a uh, an inhibitor. Hold on. Is that is that acceptable? Um. Yes, it would be very acceptable. Had the commander not walked in, I was prepared to... Really? And because somebody redeemed evil Q powers, a dove flitters across sick bay. Good sized dove, um, too. Sir Russ, without even thinking, drops to all fours, leaps and dives on it, and grabs onto it, and starts raking it with his back feet. Good news is it's a holographic pigeon, but um, yeah, or a holographic dove, the... but <laughs> that feathers going everywhere, holographic feathers. Holographic feathers that... going everywhere, yeah. Computer end program. That was gruesome. Russ stands up, looking at his clawed head, clawed oh. fingers. Oh, uh, chic. Puts them back. Um, I don't. 
exactly know why this is happening, but I've been having these urges more and more regularly ever since she came aboard the... He, like, twitches. Oh, no, I'm fine now. Right. Okay. Um, do you mind if I perform exploratory... Uh, 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 an exploratory sinus procedure on you? You are the doctor. All right. And he will grab a tool that has and he'll test it in front of him and it has t twin four inch tubules that are coming out and going back in would you like to sit first mr saras saras sits <laughs> he'll go right over and calibrate the tool and the, you may experience some discomfort brace yourself and he'll push the button and the two little nodules will go right up his nose and he'll scan for, you know, five or six seconds. And then he'll retract the nodules. Hmm. Major Razib, this feels strange. Yep, almost done. Let me, let me get those out of there. And he'll push the button to get them out of there. Ah, well, it may be a little while before this is 100% conclusive, but, you know, with 95%, uh, surety um you're having a hypersensitive reaction to certain pheromones produced by our guest so i can give you a pharo inhibitor but uh it's probably a good idea for you to you know continue avoiding her also the captain confided in me that he made uh, mr bezeth a uh, security officer so if you attempt to prey on any of the crew members he may kill you Duly noted, uh, Major Receipt. Duly noted. Just a precaution. Let me calibrate this. All right. Lean your head, and he'll move the fur away to make sure the hypo has a good contact. And then, with a wisp and a hisp, uh, <laughs> it will uh, inject uh, the ferro inhibitor. Like to imagine another bird flies across the room and Sarus mm -hmm. looks at it and his tail twitches, but he goes, Oh, what a lovely dove. I need to turn that program off. We've been having birds in here all day. I don't understand. I'm going to command a rash on it. Actually, uh, an ensign steps forward and says, uh, Actually, sir, we uh, we had a request from one of the patients that they, they felt better when there was white noise and birds flying around. I, I can tell them we have to turn it off if you, if you want. Hmm. How long is the patient expected to be here? Uh, and they kind of look behind you at one of the bio beds. Uh, that depends how quickly we can get his leg reattached. Oh, all right. A few minutes, it's fine. <laughs> Mr. Saras, will there be anything else? No, Mr. Razib. I feel like myself again. You mm. are a master of your craft. Thank you. Just one more moment. Here, it's a second dose. Take this within the next six to eight hours. Uh, and that should prolong the coverage for the next day or so. You have my thanks. And yours as well, Commander. Of course. Uh, I need to probably get back to the bridge. We have uh, uh, some analysis to do. Always a pleasure, Commander. So Russ will accompany the Commander to the bridge so that he can perform more scans on the planet we're heading to. All right, well, before we go to the bridge, we're going to go to the ready room where, Captain Williams, you've just sat down when there's a uh, chime at your door. I'm in. And in steps Avalis herself, and she kind of hesitantly walks in, kind of definitely on the tiptoes of her talons, as it were, and uh, she awkwardly stands behind the set of chairs before your desk. And she says, um... The one that senses feelings sent me to you. Ah, yes. Commander Stetko asked you to come here? That, that, that is correct. Oh, all right. I mean, please sit down. What's on your mind? I am not sure. Um, I, uh, I feel like a fish.
adrift. Cared for by something greater. Huh. I'll be. He was right. <clears throat> well, let's see what we can do to help you care for yourself. I do not how to operate your holy equipment. I uh, The last time I touched your equipment, it, it broke. A coincidence. You weren't the cause of it. You were simply there when it happened. Give me a presence command difficulty of three. And you do have three momentum if you want to use it. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's... Let's buy let's buy one extra die. That you need it, you get four successes, so you get the momentum right back. So Avalis does sort of nod and say okay, um uh, you are the supreme one here. What What is it you wish me to do? I want to help you learn about yourself. And when we learn together the tasks that you enjoy and the tasks that you have an aptitude for, we can then begin to teach you how to operate some of our equipment. I do not know what I have an aptitude for. I was a simple priestess. I've found that we all have talents that we don't know are there until we go looking for them. And as you say that, there's another chime at the door. Uh, come in. In steps Mr. Vizeth, spouting that new Ensign Pip. Ah, Ensign, hello. And just glancing over a, a ball us for a mere second, um, he's then going to refocus on the captain and ignore her completely, striding forward. Captain, Chief Engineer Rash requested that I provide you with data pertaining to the uh, isolinear chip that was delivered to us from the Federation. Oh, thank you. I don't he'll extend the pad. Oh. Well, he'll just, he'll key in his, his authorization code as he sort of looks to Avalis and say, just one moment. So, Aaron, out of character, I'm going to throw a lot of things at you very quickly. Let okay. me know if I need to repeat or if I need to explain further. Hit me. There's three things that can happen at this point. Well, I guess four, okay. technically. One, you could just ignore the message and continue on your merry way. Maybe okay. send a message back via your Midas array and say, hey, Phoenix crew, thanks for the help, kind of a thing. Um, that's option one. Option two is that you can repurpose everything that has gone into the wave motion gun and potentially attempt another micro wormhole jump back home. But I want to be very clear that doing so means dismantling the wave motion gun. And once it's dismantled, you can't fix it. It's gone. So that's option two. Mm -hmm. Option three has that rash flair to it where she basically says, if we take the special material you use to fire the wave motion gun and turn it into a proto drive, you might be able to engage within proto warp based on what the crew of the Phoenix has sent you. Long story short, if you don't know what proto warp is, it's what they use in Prodigy. It's better than actual warp. There's a whole thing there. I can explain it further if need be. 
The fourth thing is something that Rash actually very hesitantly puts in there, and you can almost sense the wording that she doesn't want to write this, but she's being, you know, diligent about it. You could turn the micro wormhole generator into a weapon. And what I mean by that is, well, you know the trope that you could just beam a torpedo to a bridge and detonate it and you never need to do anything else? You could do that with the micro wormhole generator and bypass all shielding. The only thing it would be blocked by would be neutronium. Well... <clears throat> that last one is disconcerting. But I won't see a tool for exploration perverted into a weapon. No matter how convenient that weapon might be. And of all his signs, you overhear that? Yeah, I, yeah. I think you hear that end bit. And I think of all maybe beats of his death to the punch and says, "I'm sorry, Supreme One. Is is there something amiss? Should I leave?" The briefing room. Can you wait for me there? Of of course, Supreme One. And it's... she awkwardly shuffles around Vizeth and leaves the room. And before she leaves, he'll just call back Avalis. Hmm. Uh, my title is Captain. Uh, yes, Supreme Captain. <laughs> Batting five hundred. All right, I'll I'll see you in a moment. <clears throat> Given that Commander Rash would not explain her discoveries to me, which was really rather frustrating, <clears throat> given my status as a member of the senior staff, I thought I would have been afforded such consideration. I have to ask, Captain, what is it that she's found? Well, and um, the Captain will transfer the data from the pad to his console and just sort of spin it around so that um, Vizeth can see it. He says, I think it's only fair that as our chief of security, you be aware of these options. And he almost grimaces. Obviously, Captain, from what you just said, you are not going to be electing the most prudent option. No. Nor am I going to dismantle the wave motion gun. That, at least, I think, as the humans say, is something. However, this <clears throat> proto warp, I'm unfamiliar with that branch of engineering. And I think further analysis is required to determine how much of a substantial improvement it is over quantum slipstream before I sacrifice the only ammunition we have for the wave motion cannon. If I may, Captain, this is likely to be something of a surprise to you, but if your desire is to ensure the safety of your crew, should you not simply attempt to get them home? I would obviously advocate against dismantling the wave motion cannon, but it seems as if doing so would be the best path to reaching your actual aims. The last time that we used the micro wormhole generator, we were transported halfway across the galaxy in a ship that wasn't even finished. If that fails again, well, I'd rather be where I am with a possibility of getting home and a guaranteed standoff weapon rather than a chance of getting home a chance of being lost again perhaps forever without my most potent defensive option and right as you said that the ship goes to red alert well 
that's rendered this whole discussion academic. Dude. And the captain will stand and hit the bridge. All right. And as you all run for the bridge, that's where we're going to take our five to ten minute break. We'll be back shortly, everybody. Stick around. All right, welcome back, everybody, to part two of session six of season two of Star Trek Euthenia. If you're just joining us, the players have got a moral quandary on their plate, but apparently something is amiss because Red Alert has been called. And as everyone beats feet to the bridge and starts yelling for status reports, what we see on the view screen is not promising specifically because what you see on the view screen is something that you've maybe been dreading since first arriving in the Delta Quadrant. Uh, the Euthenia is situated at long range oh, from none goodness. other than a Borg probe. And immediately, as a certain captain takes their seat, you get a hail, and this happens. We are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your ships. We will add your biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile. And the comm shuts off. Great. <laughs> Good thing we're already at red alert. Did that go to just to the bridge or did that hit all decks? All decks. Sick bay to bridge. Captain? Are we engaging the Borg? All signs point to yes, Doctor. Have sick pay ready for triage and uh, keep a phaser handy. Understood. Razeeb out. <laughs> All right, before they close the weapons range options. They are the Borg. There is only one option. Very good. I've never encountered them. I've only read about them. Launch Check. all of our available fighters and arm all weapons. So we've got the scramble scene of pilots jumping into their fighters and launching out of the bay. We have uh, everybody running to their station. Rash actually waking up and getting to the bridge and hopping into her seat. Uh, Vizeth, I like to imagine you're situated not only next to the tactical console along with Stetco, but you're also near the wave motion gun controls for the bridge. Sarus, you're scanning the nearby space and the, the board probe to figure out what you can learn about it. And with this, we are going to enter in to, I think technically our second uh, Starship combat. So I know it's been a while, but I'll walk you guys through it as need be. Uh, as a reminder, the way it works is each department basically gets a move. Um, you can double up departments, but you basically have to pay me momentum or increased difficulty to do it. But as players, you do get to act first. And what I would tell you is that, again, the Borg probe is currently at long range, which you can still hit with your weapons. It just increases in difficulty. So, open forum, who would like to act first? Uh, so, Russ, if it's all right with the crew, I would like to act first, and I would like to start modulating our shields so that they are on a modulating variant so that the Borg phasers, once they get into range, based on the knowledge we would have about the Borg, I just want our shields to be modulating like different frequencies so that they're harder to penetrate. Okay. So, is that going like, to give us an advantage? It, it would, yeah, and I'm... I'm quickly looking up the rules because I had the wrong page written down. Here it is. I if I remember control correctly, security. Yeah, that's control security. So you can do it, Saras. That is something you can do, but that would use up the security or the tactical uh, move for the ship. And again, you can do a second tactical action, but it's going to cost some momentum and an increase of difficulty. In that case, I'm not going to do that. And instead, I'm just going to scan them for weaknesses. Scan them for weaknesses. All right. That so that is... science. Uh, control and science, and the Euthenia will assist you with a sensors and security, and the difficulty on this is going to be a three. 
All right, well, there's already three successes. Let's see if the Euthenia gets you anything more. I'll roll for the Euthenia. Okay. Again, that is uh, sensors and security for the Euthenia. And the ship always has a focus? Always has a focus, yep. Okay, and it's just one die? Yep. <laughs> there mm. you go. You guys get five successes overall, mm. so you get two more momentum. Very nice. Mm. So, Sarus, what I'm going to tell you is that, yeah, you've found a few structural weaknesses that you can point out and get extra damage on your next attack, but you also discover something more. The reason the Borg probe is here is because there's a transwarp exit in this system, which is very bad. Well, maybe not for you in the long run, but bad for your friends, your centaur friends on the planet. Could we spend a momentum, actually, uh, to ask a question? Well, he's a science officer. He gets a question free. What's oh. question do you want me to ask? Well, I'm just wondering, is the ship actually carrying anything of note? Have they taken some of the, uh, the indigenous population to, uh, I guess, judge them for assimilation? Or do they have any resources on them? Because it's unusual for a probe to be out here maybe on its own. I asked that question. I asked that question. Good news. They don't have any, quote unquote, biological samples of the local fauna. However, it is clear that they were more or less dark in system as if scanning passively. And that's why you didn't pick them up until now. But they've gone active for some reason. Oh, they're alerting the rest of the board, probably. Probably a good assumption, yes. And if that doesn't make anything worse, I'm going to actually say with uh, that complication from chat, and you also did get a momentum from chat, so there is that, I'm going to say that that transwarp exit is going to start building in power, as if more ships are going to be coming through soon. Oh, we're going to fire this big motion gun. <laughs> well, that's my turn. That's your turn. All right, now, uh, quick question. Does anybody have a uh, quick to action? I don't believe so. Okay, so unless you would like to spend two momentum to let another person go, it is going to go to the Borg. All right, Borg it shall be. So the Borg actually are going to, quote unquote, modulate their shields or really modulate their hull and become a little bit more resistant to your attacks, as it were. So that's all the Borg does on its turn. We now go back to you all. How big is this probe? Like, honestly? Uh, scale I would five? say it's a scale four. So you're a scale five or you're a scale six. Either way, it's about the size of Voyager. And it was just like passively hanging out. For the moment, the yeah, it was. Okay. <laughs> Um, I guess. Also, I don't know if it's me, but Watney, you have gotten a little bit quieter than usual. Is that better? That is better. Um, I guess I need to like counsel with players here. Like, do we sure. want to get closer? And yeah. So if we wanted to use our most powerful weapon, that's a medium range weapon. We're at long range now. What we could do is have a helm operation to move us closer and then spend two momentum to take another round and fire. Yeah, I think I would use my turn to like move us if we all felt okay. good with that. Well, so. let's, uh, let's see how momentum you can get because uh, it is gonna get you somewhere. So uh, go ahead and roll me a control and con. Uh, the difficulty is zero and the ship will assist you with an engines con. So basically, it's a momentum generator, all things considered. Okay, control, con. I get the ship. I don't think I have. Yeah, I unless you've I'm got like helm this. operation no. or anything like that. All right, hey, that's three successes, which means you're capped and you have two floating. So where do you want the board probe? Do you want them at medium or do you want them at close range? I would say medium, right? Medium. Yeah, we don't want them that close. <laughs> Our shields are up, right? And they're yes. modulating. Okay. Um, we can spend that two float to retain the initiative. That you can. Sure, yeah. And she would give the order to seal all emergency bulkheads. Okay. 
All right, so with that two floating, you retain the initiative. Who's acting next? I imagine that should be Vizeth firing off our uh, Tetrion banks. And what I would tell you is that for every D20 you buy, you inflict an additional one challenge dice of damage. And you already okay. have the piercing two quality uh, thanks to the scan for weakness. Um, then augmented ability control, does that give me, that lowers the difficulty by one, right? No, it grants you, an you automatic success, but it increases the complication range to 18 to 20. And that automatic success, does that count an extra die or? Uh, I believe it does count as an additional die, yes. Because otherwise you could get really weird and just like stack augmented forever, but yeah. Okay. Actually, um, let, me, will... let me double check that real quick because I don't want to. I don't want to gimp you in a way that would be unfair. Let me just take a quick look. Yeah, looking at uh... description, the uh, the um, exceptional attribute. I don't think that actually counts as a an additional die. It's just a free success. You're right. It is just a free die. So, or not a free die, a free success. So yes, it does not count as an additional die. So I will give you that, and uh, I will spend momentum to roll. Uh, yeah, if, you, if anyone is okay with it, I'm going to roll five dice. Oh, yeah. Hands down. Absolutely. That would be all your momentum, but you can do it. And then, yeah. So, so the way that's going to work is you're going to roll a control and security. The ship will assist with weapon security. The difficulty is two in this instance. And what I would tell you is thanks to your fighter wing that you've deployed, you also do get a little bit of help there as well. So if you want to take a look at your fighter wing talent, um, you can um, opt to use your fighters here as well and more or less beef up your attack. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right. So let's see your roll and uh, let's see what happens. And it's a complication range of three with a focus. Correct. And there's your complication, there's, uh, but there's six successes uh, there. The ship is still weapon security here. Oh yeah, wait a second. You uh, you rolled on the Euthenia sheet. Oh there. yeah, I did. I'm sorry about that. No, it's quite all right. Let's uh, let's just pretend that never happened. They're <laughs> even better. Seven successes, even better. And then yeah, if uh, if we want to roll a fresh Euthenia weapon security, I got it. You said the complication range was three. Correct. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. All right, so that's still seven successes, so you get five momentum back. So what this is going to mean then is you get to roll, let me do quick math here. Your base banks are nine, so you get 12 challenge dice here with piercing two and two extra momentum you can spend on other things thanks to the fighters. Right, so I'm gonna spend uh two momentum to buy two extra dice is that right okay do you want to use the fighters for that or actual momentum i'll use the fighters for that okay so you're now up to 14 challenge dice right no sorry and uh 15. 15. and no then I'll no spend... i was right it was 14. i i can do math it's it's 14. <laughs> it's it's getting complicated here um mm -hmm. and then i'll spend one on piercing two for every effect well you don't have to because you already have scan for weakness which is already giving you that piercing two uh, then I'll spend one of our momentum on 15 challenge dice. Okay. Yeah, just casual 15 dice, and there's 13 of 13 successes with Good five gosh. effects. So it effectively ignores all the board or board probes resistance because even with its modulated hull, that's more than sufficient. That's enough to also kill its shields. So that's two breaches. Um, I think if you give me two momentum to make it a devastating attack, it just blows up. Yeah, ah! let's do that. Okay. Everybody loves Starship Combat because we can just cheese our way through it if there's scale four and lower. So yeah, um, why don't you describe how beautifully the bro the Borg probe blows up as I rearrange things? Uh, I think that working in conjunction with a series of coordinated uh, bomber assaults that uh, sort of peck away at those various different points that have been identified as weak spots, uh, there's this disruption or the series of cascading explosions across its surface so that the Euthenia then slowly using its ponderous bulk sort of maneuvers into position and then releases these massive torrents of fire from the uh, the batteries along its side, broadsiding the, uh, the Borg 
uh, probe, and it just almost is it, it engulfed in this massive, uh, just a swirling vortex of uh, of energy, and it uh, it's vaporized completely. Uh, Stetko's probably going to give Vizeth a look. <laughs> well done, officer. Thank you, Commander. Though uh, the uh, and he looks over at uh, Commander Saras. The commander's assistance was invaluable. Fantastic shooting. It was yes, but I was attempting to be more human and. Uh, share the burden of praise? Is it something like that? No, no. That was all you. Well done. Hmm. You'll hear a uh, comm channel pipe in. Uh, this is Kaj. I don't know who you've got at the helm, but they're a damn good shot, Captain. All right. Alpha and Beta Wings report back to hangers. Kaj out. Captain, I must say that we should move quickly to close the transwarp conduit, if at all possible. And here he's actually looking over at Ceres again. Is there any means for us to do so? Collapse the transwarp conduit? Ceres would like to perform a scan. Uh, I'm looking for some kind of either advantage or just any sort of data, you know, maybe a weak structural point, something that we could do mm -hmm. to disrupt the conduit. Uh, would that be control science? It would be control science. The ship will assist you with a either a sensors or a computers plus science. I am going to set the difficulty at a four. All right, I'm going to spend those last three momentum to roll four dice. Mm -hmm. I do have a focus. And I think this is important. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to spend a determination. Okay. And I'm just going to roll three dice. Okay. That is six successes. That is already six successes. Let's see if the Euthenia gets you anything more. So What's the Euthenia's roll? Uh, sensor science in this aspect, or computer science. I'll let you choose. Mm, okay. And uh, any complication range? Nope. Regular complication range of one. All right. So that is seven total successes, meaning you get back three momentum. So yeah, so Russ, what you find is that this is actually a very old transwarp exit, meaning that the structures inside the actual transwarp conduit are admittedly of an older design, a little bit more easy to blow up. But the bad news is that while Vizeth might be an amazing shot, you don't have the torpedoes capable of destroying the transwarp hub. You have the wave motion gun, but that would be tremendous overkill. I will explain this to the captain and defer to his decision-making process. You're muted. Am I? No, oh, the captain. Muted. Is. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Um, it's my understanding from an engineering perspective that... Um, Tremendous graviton fluxes are at play inside a transwarp corridor. Could we not project a stream of anti gravitons to destabilize the aperture? I would like that to be my one free question. There you go. Um, yeah, but it's going to drain most of your power and in a significant way that isn't just going to come back on the next scene. Um, can we get any readings of the inside of the transwarp conduit, such as to suggest that perhaps if we were inside of it, we might be able to collapse it far more easily without a, nearly as much of an expenditure of power? Give me a momentum. I will answer that question. What do you think, everyone? Spend it. Okay. This is yeah, exciting. if you get inside, it's going to be easier to close. But the problem is you don't know where that transwarp hub leads. I mean, you assume it goes back to an actual hub. <laughs> But uh, it's, uh, it's middle of org space. I would advise. As we've um, seen, though, they, they do generally branch off into other locations. Or am I incorrect in that assumption about? No, uh, you're right. So you could get lost in there very, very easily without any idea where you're about to pop out. And it's not something where you close it and then you just exit into normal space. No, you basically shut the door behind you. Mm hmm. Oh, and if that doesn't make anything worse, since uh, someone did redeem another evil, 
You detect that there's a tactical cube on its way. You've got like 10 minutes to make a decision. Well, we have to close that aperture. We, we can't outrun them even at warp. We don't have the Benamite yet for a QSD jump. Commander Stetko, what do you think? I say we do what we have to do. We have to close that. All right, then. Uh, curse you, Captain. Curse you, game master. Captain, I, I think I've got an alternate, but you're not going to like it either. Well, that's that's today. So, what have you got? Uh, if we sent in the uh, Shakaris escorts and overloaded their warp cores, that might do it. But we'd lose both escorts, and we don't have the materials to make new ones. No, we don't. <clears throat> Captain, considering that we have the materials to actually construct this. Uh, and he looks around at the rest of the bridge crew, sighs, the new warp drive. We could enter into the transwarp conduit, destroy it from the inside, and arrive in almost any location in the Delta, Alpha, or Beta quadrants, and still be able to return you home. Nine minutes, Captain informs Dor Dorothy. Thank you. All right. Well, we need to make a decision. I need to hear everybody's opinion. Blow it from the inside or use the wave motion gun from the outside with no guarantee of ever finding more fuel and no guarantee we'll ever be able to create a proto-warp drive. I guess I need like out of character clarity on blowing up a <laughs> a portal that we're currently in. Like <laughs> we're not we're not in it yet though. We but if we went into it, we the idea into... is we go in and then we destroy it. Yeah. Like and, and we end up somewhere when we come out the other let's side. Do that. Sounds That's fun. a great adventure. That sounds amazing. <laughs> out of character, I want to do that. We also right. just have to roll the crazy difficulty of exiting before the uh, the travel <laughs> conduit collapses on us. And that yeah, tactical cube that's coming down the pipe. on our tail. <laughs> so. And we and we'll be and we'll we'll just do we do we have transphasic torpedoes on record? Well, no, you have it on record, we'd... but do you have it on board? No. Well, I, as a matter of fact, like I don't know if you, you just know, but like the Euthenia herself doesn't have functional torpedo launchers. So even if we did have some, we just, just. But anyway, we just, just drop them in there. That's exactly all right. Let's do that. So yeah, the captain's going to order the helm to, you know, head half impulse into the. Oh God. <laughs> we're doing this. A head half impulse into the conduit. All right. Out of character, this is Cold ELH just tossing reason. one manila folder into the trash and picking up another one. All right, we're doing this plan. <laughs> All right, so you enter into the transwarp conduit. It's kind of a shimmering tunnel of green and white and yellow energy. You see that now that you're in the transwarp conduit, you see that there is kind of that Borg hexagonal structure that is maintaining the exit. And if I understand correctly, you are going to be dumping a anti-graviton pulse to destabilize it is that correct whatever we have to do to just destroy yeah if we're gonna if we're gonna use well i thought the anti-gravitons would seriously deplete our power it would and that's what i'm leading to i'm gonna give you guys the option of telling me how much power you want to put into the graviton beam or the anti-graviton beam if it's enough it destabilizes the corridor if it's not enough, you're not going to have that power back by the time the tactical cube's here. But what I would also right. tell you is you're going to need that power to outrun and survive the tactical cube. Ooh. Ooh. So it's kind of a dilemma here. So let's see. What's the, the ship's got 12 power? Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
What are we thinking? We dump like five, maybe six, maybe half of our available power. I would say at least half. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I was thinking seven, but seven does see my six raise raise me one. Um, so like we have one, twelve. What, how one much is. My brain's like one is potentially destabilize this terminant. Eleven is destroy the entire transwarp network. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'd go that far, but um, well, let's six. Let's, let's, two let's, of you took six, so let's average. How many total again? Do we have twelve? Twelve. I'm here for nine. We can just get some. And we just and, and we then just we need, die. We but just need we just need one six and a leftover half. after all said and done. Six and a half. There we go. Six and a half. With a little bit to preserve <laughs> uh, Dorothy's matrix. Okay. Yeah. So if right. I understand correctly, you want to spend seven here. Yes. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. So Russ, all more. you're going to be making this roll because I'm picking on you. Ooh. I need you to roll me seven challenge dice, please. And this is going to represent the power you are using. All right. Well, what a time to be alive. All right. Let's see here. Uh, let grab so you've got, so you've got some momentum to roll. So perform challenge. Answer. You said seven. Correct. <laughs> it doesn't foundry like me. Oh, there it goes. All right. Uh, Yolo. Five. Okay. Three okay that three is refresh. five, with three effects. What I would tell you is that I'm trading this like starship combat still, and there is resistance in play. So you may wish to spend momentum to get rid of that. Spend resistance. momentum to get rid of the resistance. Okay. How much momentum are you going to spend? Are you going to spend all, all of it? Two? All that we have. Okay. All that we have. Then left. that is significant enough that as the Uthenia enters into the transwarp conduit, turns yes. around and fires a antigraviton pulse out of its deflector array. The structure that is maintaining the exit begins to crumple and crackle and explode. And at kind of a last loss for words, the system you were once in is now sealed off to you. You cannot get back into the uh, centaur alien system, as it were. So that's one problem down. The next problem is the tactical cube that is coming down the pipe, and that's going to require some fancy flying. So I want to confirm... Stetko, are you remaining at the helm? <laughs> yes. Best okay. pilot amongst us. <laughs> All right, That's so cool. Stetko. I got into this mess of my opinions, so let's do it. <laughs> Stetko, there's a few ways you can go about this, but the easiest way I can think to dumb them down, not because I don't think you can handle it, but just because we only have so much time remaining. Okay. Um, yeah. You can either just blindly fly like a bat out of hell. That's That's always a good option. You could take a moment to scan the network and try to figure out where you're going, but that's going to take some time, which the tactical cube might pew pew you, just to let you know. Or you could just, um, I don't know, wave motion gun the cube right there and see what happens when you blow up a wave motion With gun in, in the transwarp network. The, uh, uh, um, I, have a, I have a question, GM. Sure. So even if we're not using it, the the Euthenia is equipped with with the, the the QSD drive and has the ability to generate a QSD field. That is um, correct. In order to safely navigate QF, QSD, you have to have sufficiently advanced sensors to almost be precognitive. That is correct. Could could we not leverage those sensors in some way to assist us here by using their sort of predictive nature to plot a proactive course around the the tactical cube? I'd allow it, but someone's going to have to make the roll. I'll do it. Okay. Sciencey stuff. I got this. All right, so Russ, this is going to be for you a daring and a science. Mm -hmm. The Euthenia yeah. will assist you with a sensors and con. I am going to set the difficulty to five. All right. Well, you're going to get three threat. Three threat. Okay. And actually, you know what? I'm giving you. F I'm giving you six threat. Yolo. Six threat. Okay. Yep. I'm going to roll five dice. And oh, I forgot to roll my challenge dice to see if I got my determination back. Oh, because yeah, of that more threat. Oh, all right. Well, actually, with that effect, you do get your uh, determination back. With I'm gonna uh, spend it challenge. to get two free to get a free success, <laughs> and I'm gonna roll five dice. Yolo. Uh, well, you should only roll four with uh, four dice. Four dice. Four yeah, dice. Four. All right. 
And whamma lamma bing bang. Boost! Well, there it is. That's seven successes. All right, no help from the ship. So what I'm going to say then is, Saras, you working the sufficiently advanced sensors, you are able to pipe a course over to Commander Stetko. Uh, and Stetko, you see that on the predictive nature of the sensors and how you know how Borg fly, you can potentially sidestep the cube. However, I now have to ask you, how much power do you want to devote to you running? You have so five I, at the I, moment. I like the option of her planning a route, trying to like find an actual route. Is well, that... Well, the good news is that Sarus just did that for you, so. Okay. Well, I mean, not around the cube, like where they're gonna end up. Oh, that's what you mean. Um, is that, that, isn't that would... what, wasn't that one of your suggestions? It is, but uh, it will mean that you're not going to get as much of a bonus from what Sarustus did. So right now, okay. Sarustus' role is reducing your task from a five down to a three. If you spend time to plot where you're going, that's going to lessen, and it'll be a difficulty four instead. Okay, so the option is, like, so I have focus. Mm -hmm. I have a focus of games of chance. I also have yeah, a value. So. I have a value of always have an ex exit strategy. So Very which apropos. one is going to like benefit us more? Is the focus going to benefit us more in this case, or is tapping a value? Well, the focus better? applies to all your roles. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, okay. The determination, though, that you would get by tapping that value would give you two free successes. Right, but narratively, it only makes sense to tap that value if she's plotting an actual exit. I mean, you're looking for a way out of this transwarp conduit. Eh, okay, that's you can fair. stretch it, is what I'm telling you. So the question, I guess, then I, all I have is, or you have for me, is how much power I want to use. Yes, and what I, I would tell to, you is, again, the more power you put into this, the faster you fly. If you lose all power, your polarized hull plating goes kaput. So you might want to at least keep one power. Also, looking at chat, apparently we uh, are running the adventures of Prometheus Chan. I'll um, I'll get back to you on that. Watch my Twitter for, for advice on that. Um, okay. So, uh, how much power do we have left? We, we spent seven. We had so 12. So, you have five remaining. So, got so we have five. five. So, we want to go zoom, zoom, but we don't want to go boom, boom. Yep, exactly. <laughs> So let's do three. Okay. Oh, that sounds great. Okay, so we'll do three power. What am I rolling? You're rolling a daring and a con. The ship will assist you with an engines con. And this will uh, be a difficulty three at the moment. Okay, do we have momentum? Uh, you have two at the moment. I'm going to spend them. Okay. So if you're using determination, if you're using a value, that means you're rolling three dice here. And when it asks if you're using determination or a value, hit the yes button. Oh, yeah. I'm, I have it checked. Okay. okay. Then, yeah, let's uh, see what happens. Okay. Yeah. So that is two out of three required success. Okay. The Euthenia gets your third. So, here's what's going to happen, because I don't think there's any way of getting rid of this complication. So Stetko, using Sarus's scans and using the advanced sensors and doing your best to figure out where the hell it is you're going to go, how to get around the cube, a lot of things happen very quickly. But the end result is we see the Euthenia quite literally doing a barrel roll over the top of the cube, and it kind of doesn't quite scrape the hull of the cube, but you fly tremendously close, like within scratching distance in a cosmic sense. Um, and the cube is unable to divert and literally shift the two kilometer, two click cubed cube in time. So you actually put a lot of distance between yourself and the tactical cube. But the complication is you go to the left, you go to the right as the conduits begin to branch. You go left, right, left, right, 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 left. You're completely lost. You have no idea where you are. And the complication is also going to be, because I also have some threat, 
there are more tactical cubes coming down the other conduits, and you are funneled towards one that opens up somewhere into space, but your sensors aren't able to get through all the interference. You have the option of going through this open portal and destroying it on the way out using the Shikaris escorts, or you can attempt to keep flying and try to find another exit. So, kind we of an out of, car- out of character call. To make another rush. You have right? one more expendable power you could do. Well, we got to keep the lights on. Actually, hold on, wait a second. Uh, you do have backup EPS conduits. So, Rash could technically get you power back, but that would take time that you may not have. So, um, I would say Seko would make a judgment call here. Okay. And she would take the exit with okay. that diverted out. Then the question I want to make sure is very clear. Are you going to use the Shikaris escorts to destroy the exit behind you? Um, she'll check with the captain first. I don't see that we have any choice. Right. Any last, uh, any, <laughs> any, <laughs> um, any objections? Do it. Yeah, okay, she'd do it. Okay. So you fly screaming little trails of fire coming from your nacelles as you fly out into open space, ejecting the Shikaris escorts behind you. They tumble and spin and begin to detonate and explode the transwarp exit behind you. It seals itself in a cacophony of explosions and light and matter and energy, but you're thrown clear of the explosion. And you emerge in a very strange star system. And what I mean by that is... It's a trinary system, but it's trinary black holes. And circling around those black holes in a strange polar orbit is a blue gas giant of a star. Wait, so there's three black holes like yep. orbiting, orbiting each other. Orbiting around each other. Yep. And then there's a blue giant orbiting map. Yes, a blue, an O-class star, yeah. Okay. And O-class stars are like super, like they're the biggest stars possible. So this isn't just a tiny blip on the view screen. This is like, oh, that's blue. Yeah. Big, big blue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are the, are the, the, the black holes hyper giants? They're very large. Okay. Uh, s- go ahead. I think that immediately, uh, Vizeth is going to turn over to um, our chief science officer, scan those black holes. As you command. And I will scan those black holes. Okay. And what do you want to know about them? They're black holes. Uh, are they alive? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is exactly yeah. what Vizeth is wondering. Only on you yeah. do we have to uh, quantify the <laughs> question. Eek. All right, Saras, so since you asked that question, it's going to be an insight in science. The Euthenia is going to assist you with the computers in science. The difficulty on this will be a four. You have one momentum. Actually, you, you did threat. roll veteran again. You've got veteran again, so go ahead and... Oh, I could. I roll, uh, roll, your, roll your challenge die. Let's see if you get veteran back. Wee. All right, oh. you don't, unfortunately. Ah, all right, all right. I'm going to give you a threat, and I'm going to spend... I'm going to give you two threat and spend a momentum. And Roll four dice. I got to right. focus. All right, there's your four you need. Let's see if the Euthenia gets you... Okay, nothing more for the Euthenia. So... Remember how when we started this adventure, you guys scanned Null's body, and... You learn certain properties about it. Yeah, those three are alive. Mm-hmm. I knew it. I, I gosh darn knew it. It's but best. you also learn something interesting. That star, it ain't there. Something else is there, though. 
It's kind of like a moon, like a Luna sized shell of neutronium that is projecting a holographic matrix of a star. Hmm. I explain this to the crew and <laughs> defer to the captain for what we should do. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, GM, how many mm. shots do we have with the wave motion gun? You have one. <laughs> right. Oh, right. The, the situation. But we're not going to try and kill them. No, you're not. But <laughs> <laughs> but the new security officer might. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just going to debate this uh, uh, between me, myself, and I. Uh, continue. <clears throat> Some foreshadowing. Go ahead, Captain. Wow. <clears throat> Razib to bridge. Is it over? Oh, Major. I don't think it's even started yet. <laughs> Very well, sir. Razib out. I don't know that we're... <clears throat> well, no. I know for a fact that if those three black holes are alive we are most certainly out of our depth yeah can we like triangulate our location somehow on i was waiting for someone to ask yeah yeah you know exactly where you are you're right back where you started this adventure literally god bless it but were these guys here not before no these are um is she still getting the same feeling you are, and in fact, you're feeling, because before it was overpowering power and dread and kind of a, an oppressive feeling, well, you haven't gotten a booster from a certain doctor in a while, so oh, yeah, you're feeling that full power. Um, And actually, to help you guys out, someone in chat said something earlier that you might wish to capitalize on, but I'm not going to give you more hint than that. <laughs> oh, God. That's... Oh, Lord. Oh, no. And I think, although he's almost trembling, Bazeth is going to uh, speak to the captain and suggest, Captain... We should leave this area of space, acquire more fuel for the wave motion cannon, and return once we can destroy all three of black holes. Ensign, if I put the after this ship to this region of space, I'm never coming back here. I suppose that would suffice. Should we not leave now? <sighs> I believe so. Helm. Wait, what are we doing? We're leaving? Yes. They're not threatening us. True. My biggest Yet. concern right now is that we're back where we started, not the three black holes who may be able to help us. To make things more complicated, as you're all debating this, Stetko, in addition to the immense dread and oppressive mm -hmm. nature you're feeling, you sense a lot of joy actually coming from Ovalis as she walks onto the bridge. And she actually kind of just walks past you, Stetko, at your station and walks right up next to the captain and says, The Great Ones, the Great Ones are here. You've brought me home. Uh, so Russ immediately, not to break the levity of the situation, but starts hacking up. Uh, sounds sounds like a hairball as she enters in. What? Mm. Ah, you, ah, get that, you get that? Do, ah. You get that? Dose yourself, Captain. I, <laughs> ah, ah, I need to, Captain. Captain, and he rushes out of the bridge. It's working, Major Razib. It's working. <laughs> we broke oh, that. Good oh. job. 
Valus, what do you mean, your home? Well, the Divine Ones. Three of them are here, which means that you are sending me back to my reality. I... I don't know how. And she kind of points at the fake star. Send me there. Now, Vizeth, you're hearing all this. If it wasn't clear out of character, Avalis is implying that she is part of a faction that worships these black holes. So do it that what you will, knowing what Vizeth knows. Well, that presents a challenge or an opportunity or both or certain destruction. Uh, what what do they know the Senshi and Black Hole living on this ship's name by again? Truman Tillian. Still concealed. Mm-hmm. Vizeth has no idea. Oh, Vizeth has no idea and is the new security officer. <laughs> okay. Um, good to know. Yeah, he kind of broke himself before she let slip that her name was so-and-so, so. Great. Uh, so Stucco will kind of order all decks to report in on any possible damage, ensure everything's kind of going smoothly in engineering, get an ETA on when power might be restored. Well, the good news is you got Rash on the bridge and she kind of shouts over, or Yawn shouts over, right, it's going to be like three hours before we're warp capable again, but uh, we're not in any danger of flying into the black holes or that fake star thing, so good news there, I guess. Well, the commander, we know that star is fake. Let's see if we can open a channel. I think at that, Vizeth just slams his fist down on the console in front of him, even though the captain can't see him from his vantage point. He hears that echoing sound, and he's going to slam his comm badge. Captain, leave now. There is nothing to be gained here. I'm not so sure. A little more forthcomingness with Zeth would probably benefit the situation if you know something about them that we don't. Apparently I know everything about these things that you do not. They are not to be trifled with. They're not to be reasoned with. They don't, it, uh, reason doesn't even apply to for, them. For what purpose? What have they done? What don't we know? You know nothing about them. It's beyond knowing. If I can I interject real quickly? Avalis at this point has kind of held her arms wide open, you know, one to either side, and begun to sing in a language that um, would be very reminiscent of a certain Cthulhu mythos, as it were. Captain, we know that this entity uses sonic-based attacks. It could be, and he just sort of like descends into an incoherent gibbering in a language that you don't quite understand as it becomes this sort of uh, electronic popping, just pure aggression and uh, something overwrought. <laughs> Captain Spacer, no, just stressed. You guys thought you were going to get fun horse adventures. Nope! Well, I mean, just like as a player, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. Oh, that's 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 the intent. 
That is literally the intent of this situation. Good. So we're not warp capable. We're impulse capable. Like, what's our locomotive ability right now? You got impulse and thrusters. We have an, okay, so we can't basically we basically can't go anywhere. You're correct. Yeah, no, not 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 quickly. So we're we stuck here for a few hours. There's that too. Yeah. 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 So we have no auxiliary craft capable of warp down. Uh, so Stecco will approach um, Avalis actually as she's singing and be like, what are you doing? How are you communicating with them? I am simply singing the hymns of the great ones. I do not know if they can hear me, but I offer up my voice in prayer all the same. Why do you view them as great? And she kind of stops what she's doing to look at you and says, I do not understand your question. They are as much gods as you are. Hmm. And the captain's going to stand up. Um, he's going to walk back to the Seth's station. Okay. You have to walk um, downstairs, but yeah, you walk downstairs. Yeah. And he says, Ensign, I understand how strongly you feel about these entities. I also understand that I may not have all the information that you do. But before we encountered you, we encountered one of these beings. And it did us no harm. It meant us no harm. I can't arbitrarily decide that they're all hostile because some of them are. And as you've approached him, you can see that there's actually on the the schematics in front of him a uh, targeting solution on one of the black holes with the wave motion gun that hasn't been activated, but all the calculations have been made and his, his hands are clutched at the, uh, the console, almost the equivalent of white knuckling for a human being, just almost holding himself there. Now I have a question for you. I see what you're doing. We could potentially destroy one of them. Where would that leave us? We would die, Captain, in their retaliatory strike. And in the end, that last act of defiance would achieve nothing in the long run. And he actually, he actually interrupts you right there. And it's not something that's incredibly audible, but he just sort of hisses it out in a, a language that you, you'd understand because it's just a very close approximation to English, but it's still garbled. Mm-hmm. And he just hisses out, I'd get revenge. That's a powerful compulsion. They killed my entire crew. They did? Directly? You saw the state of my vessel. They're everything that we always knew them to be. They're a cancer that shouldn't be in this galaxy. Festering pustules popping up all over the place. We have to cut it out. But if it's certain death to act in this instant, isn't it more pragmatic to buy our time and act from a position of relative strength? We aren't even warp capable. We'd have no chance in an attack. And the minuscule satisfaction you'd feel in revenge would be erased in a nanosecond when we were wiped from existence. Any opportunity for future retribution will be lost to you forever. That's the only reason I haven't fired, Captain. 
then follow my lead but keep your hand close to that targeting sensor if if I feel it's necessary I'll give you the order to fire and just looks down and then nods <clears throat> and the, the captain will nod and return upstairs and take his seat and sort of look at Stetco gravely See. She turns to him and gives him, like, just shakes her head. Commander, open a channel. And that open. is where we're going to end today's session. Because you have to figure out what you're going to say. And I don't want you to do it on the spot because I can already tell you're all like, fuck. <laughs> so I'm going <laughs> to yeah, give I'm you, like... I'm going to give you the time to uh, figure out what you want to say. Because this went from a one-parter bottle episode to, <laughs> yeah, that uh, that uh, that happened very quickly. We do that. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, the good news is that uh, we actually covered a lot of character growth here, all things considered. Uh, got to see a little bit of uh, shenanigans from Sarus. We got to see some development out of Azeth. Uh, Razib and Stetko, of course, contributed, and Williams, of course, did his thing. So I think I call that a success overall. I would agree. Yeah. All right. So YouTube and podcast. This is where it say this is where we say goodbye. But uh, Twitch, we're gonna raid somebody. So stick around. See you later, podcast people. <laughs>